After quarantine, Pitlevsky was directed to normal blocks to, and to work in various commandos, work units. He dug fish ponds in a mill carrying bags of grain and transporting various food items and building materials that he needed in the camp. He renovated the railway station in the city of Auschwitz too. Here I should also mention the food we had. In the morning we were given half a litre of avo, which was neither coffee or soup without bread, but similar. For dinner, three quarters of a litre of beetroot, cabbage or swede, with sometimes a piece of potato. For supper would be half a litre of unsweetened grain coffee and one bread. 700 grams for four people and a tablespoon of mustard, jam, margarine. One supper stuck in my memory in particular. They brought us bread and cheese for dinner. They put it on the table and began handing it out. We were looking at what was supposed to be cheese and there was no cheese at all, just something that moves. We took a closer look and it turned out to be white worms which ate the cheese, but everything was eaten with the worms anyway. Several times I went with the rest to find leftover bones from which it was possible to suck the marrow. These bones were thrown from the SS kitchen into a hole behind the camp fence, which was to be covered with soil later on. The Germans noticed that the prisoners gnawed on these bones, so they ordered that after each bones were thrown out, they should be covered with fertilizer from nearby barns. It didn't help though. The hungry prisoners continued to take them, clean them and still eat them. At first, the Germans looked at it and laughed. Later, they just forbid pulling those bones out, and whoever they caught was beaten up. Still very few prisoners had access to these bones, because only those who worked outside the camp gate could get them. At the end of 1941, work began on the construction of a new camp, Berkeley, about three kilometres from the main camp in Auschwitz. Petlevsky was forced to build it. He started by digging drainage ditches on both sides of the planned road from the entrance gates to the planned crematorium at the end of the camp. It was very hard work and those who were weak and could not throw the mud from a pit were beaten and drowned in the mud. He was then directed to begin building the barracks. During his stay, he was given various injections, though he did not know what they are and he developed ulcers on his legs as a result, which he had kept secret as he feared medical experiments would be done on him. In Auschwitz, I received two bowls of soup from my friend Kopet, whom I knew from school. He was arrested a month earlier than me and he was in a boiler house in Block 21. He was murdered in the spring of 1943. In the camps, with the exceptions of these two bowls of soup, I did not receive any help from prisoners who performed various functions in the camp. Everyone used the weaker prisoner as much as possible, but now, after the liberation, a lot of such heroes appeared, who praised themselves constantly about how they helped weaker fellow prisoners.